Hello and welcome to this fourth video in our series of 10 involving the product configurator and the product configuration modeling and models. My name is Jens Christensen. I am the program editor for Western Computer. And what we like to talk about today is the use of the constraints in when you build your models. And let me just open up a product configuration model so we can see what I am talking about. The constraints are the rule sets or the rule engine that you can set up for your specific configuration model. This is where you have your ability to set some rules to control what values you can have in your configuration. There are a few different types of constraints here. We have the expression constraint and we have a table constraint. Within the table constraint, we have even more segregation. We have a user-defined and we have a system-defined table constraint. I'll start off with the expression constraint. The expression constraint is using the expression editor where you can put in a syntax that will define a rule for you. Now, the example that we have right here, we can go in and take a look. So I will going to go ahead and edit this expression here and we can take a look. So in my last video, I went through the expression editor and how that can be used. And it's the same here. This is where you can set some rules on the configuration model. And the example here implies that if you have not select the front grill, then you don't need the corner protection or then you can't say yes to corner protection. So it's a predefined rule that you can set that allows for you to be guided through the configuration modeling correctly. Additionally, it's also usable for making sure that you get the right calculations or the right selections in your routing and so on. So that's the expression constraint that's using the expression editor. Second, I'd like to show you the table constraint. So the table constraint, again, can be set up is more of a generic tool set that you can set up and then you can map it into the different models. So where the table constraint are maintained up underneath in a more generic way and where you can set up these informations here. So let me take a look at this one and show you how that works. So this one is the user defined table constraint. And what we're looking into now is that we're defining what fields or what attribute types and attribute types are generic as well that we'd like to use. And then we can use that to set up the allowed combinations between those attribute types that we have here. So if we take a look here, the allowed combinations that are set up here is listed down here. So you can control what kind of information that you need. So that means that if you select rosewood, for example, then you cannot select anything but white on the grill. However, if you select white on the finish, then you can select both black and white, but you cannot select metal. So let's try to show you that in an example here. So I'm going to go back to my model and I will run the test so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's try to look at the finish here. So if I select oak here, then I only applicable is black. So that means that the other ones will not be available. That's because of the table constraint. However, if I go in and choose white and I go and take a drop down, you see that we have two different options here. And that shows you the two different combinations that were shown in the table constraint. As I said in the beginning, the table constraints can be used several or more generic. So once they're set up in the generic way, as we saw right before, you would have to create them in here on the model. So you create the constraint, you select the constraint type, and then you set the table constraint definition. And that is what you can see in here. So you have to select that line, you'll go in and you'll select the color and the finish. And uh, uh, you select that table constraint that you created. And then you map it to the attribute that you have in your model. And the only attributes that you can select are the ones with the same attribute type as the one we selected in the table constraint. So that means that the cabinet finish here can only be selected and the front grill can only be selected. Let me go in. You can see the only table constraint column I can select is this one here because they have the same attribute type. It's not possible for me to use anything on the corner protection or speaker height. There is no attribute types that make sense here. So that means that once you map it in, that will allow you to control that. So the last table constraint is the system-defined table constraint. And 
It's the same as the other table constraint where you set up the allow combination. However, it is possible for you to select any table that is within the system. And I've created an example down here and we'll go through it to see how that looks. So underneath the table constraints where we create the color and finish, you can also create a type called system defined. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this is set up. So by looking into this, I see that I have selected an item group to be filled and I've looked into the item group table, which is the system defined table. In there, I've pointed out the field. So much like you do on the user defined table group, you select the fields within that table and then you associate it to the attribute type of your product model. So here I'm looking in to see, okay, what kind of an accessory item can I select from selecting an item group ID? Also, since some of the tables, the system table can be very, very large, you can select a query. So you can set up a query where you can control how many items do we want to validate this table constraint against. So I've just looked, it's very simple. I'm looking at item numbers that start with A and C. So let me show you how that works. So going back to the product model, you'll set it up the same way as you did on the table constraint. You go in, you set it up as a new item, as a new line here. Let's go in and edit the table constraint. You select your table constraint name and then you associate those fields together. So let's try to test it and I can give you an example of what it looks like. So now if I go in and take a look here, we have the two button down here. Those are the two that we made a table constraint again. So I'd like to be able to select an item from the item table. Right now, when I do a drop down right now, you can see all the items in the item table that starts with an A and C. That's because of our query. Now I can see all of the applicable in item groups that you have that are available in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and select TV and video. Once I select that and I'm going to go back here, you see now that now can only select the between the two that starts with A because those are the only two items within our query that has the item group called TV and video. So that's how the system defined table constraint works. And that's a very strong tool, very complex tool that can be used for very different reasons.